Hey everybody, Tom here, and in this video I want to teach you how to play the Corvid Conspiracy Faction for the game Root. Now just a quick heads up about this video, uh, if you are unfamiliar with the rules of Root, this video is going to be terrible, you will not know what's going on. You need to know the basic rules in order for this video to have any meaning. There is a general rules video in the description of this video if you want a little extra help with that. But yeah, with that said, let me tell you a little bit about this faction. Um, this faction is thematically... Oh my gosh, I don't, I don't know if I'm going to get in trouble for this, but basically, this faction is the terrorists of Root. They are, <laughs> they're just mean and sneaky and sly, and they're just trying to create a whole bunch of chaos. And so if you're interested in this faction, that's what we're going to be talking about here. So if we flip over this board, you can see the types of pieces that we've got going on here. Uh, this faction has 15 warriors. They don't have any buildings. They're going to have eight plot tokens and no other pieces. Now, I'm not quite sure why, but they did come with an extra full set of all of these tokens. I think because a big deal here is keeping these tokens face down. And so I imagine if they get scuffed or anything like that, there's a whole extra set of these tokens that I'm just going to go ahead and remove from the video for now. Uh, you can see this, this faction is low complexity. I think I agree with that pretty well. It says moderate aggression, and I guess that's true. Only in the sense that they're passive aggressive, because these guys are so mean. Um, and then their card wealth, they can, they're so-so on their cards, and then they're going to be able to craft a bunch using these plot tokens. We'll talk more about that later. But you can see that this is set up letter I, so uh, things are always set up in alphabetical order. And so any faction with a letter before I needs to set up first. And what we're going to do in this video is, we're going to set this up as a three-player game, and I'm going to imagine that faction A and B, the Marquise faction and the, um, oh my gosh, I do this every time, the Eerie Dynasties faction, is already set up on the board, because they would be before us in letters, and now let's set these guys up. The only thing we need to do for setup is to put three warriors out on the map, one in a clearing of each suit. So there are three different suits of clearings on the board. We need to go put our guys out in one of each of those. Now, I am not a strategizer. This is not a strategy guide. Please don't pretend like it is one, because it's not. Um, but just for simplicity's sake, let's go ahead and put these three here in the middle, because that would this spot right here has one of each type of faction, so that seems like a nice way to do this video. Now they don't say it in the setup as you saw, but usually what I would like to do probably is I would take these tokens and put them face down and you want to kind of keep them secret um, like this. Now the general idea behind this faction is that they're trying to get these plot tokens on the board and those tokens are going to be face down and so here let's just grab a couple just for fun. Let's place them here. All right, so just for purposes of this video, we're going to pretend that these tokens are out on the board. But we're trying to get these plot tokens out on the board, and I'll show you how to do that in just a minute. And we're trying to get them flipped face up. Not only are terrible things going to happen when they're flipped up and those things are listed over here, but we're also going to score points in this part of our phase by flipping things face up. So that's kind of the main way that we're going to get points is by putting those tokens out face down, get them flipped up in order to score some points. So let's kind of go through what a turn looks like for this particular faction so you can get an idea. The very, very first thing that uh, uh, this faction can do on their turn is if they can and want to craft an item, they can do that first. And so crafting means you would look for the cards that have these icons here in the top corner. Those exact same icons will be in the bottom corner like that. And this faction is going to use their plot tokens in order to craft. Now these tokens could be face up or face down, it doesn't really matter. But you could see here that we have one fox, another fox, and a mouse plot token. So I wouldn't be able to craft any of these. I would either need three foxes, one of each kind, or two rabbits, oh, I think, whatever, um, in order to craft these. We don't have those, but this is the point in the game where you would be able to, if you had those plot tokens in the correct place, play a card down and do what it says, or maybe you'd get a special ability and put it under your board. So yeah, some the crafting happens in all different places for the factions. For these guys, it's the very first thing that they do. Next, what you could do, this is where you're going to earn your points, is you can flip some plot tokens of your choice 
but those clearings would have to have a warrior in them. So we had warriors up here and we have plot tokens down here. The only plot token that we could flip over at this point would be this token. So at this part of the game, what we would do is we would flip that token up. We would check what this token does and we'll go over that in just a second, but we would score one point for every face up plot token on the board at that moment. So in this example, there's just that one token, we would get one point. Now, if we had a warrior down here and decided to flip this one up as well, then we would get two points. And so being able to have a bunch of those tokens on the board and flipping them face up is pretty important. So let's go over what the different tokens do. So the snare, we had flipped one of those over. So the snare would stay on the board and when it's face up, so as it is now, then that means that enemy pieces can't be placed onto the board during other players' turns or any reason and they can't leave that board. It's like they're caught in a snare, they're stuck. They just, yeah. So it matches pretty nicely thematically. Let's flip another one. Ooh, extortion. So for extortion, what happens is when you flip it, you're gonna take a random card from a player who has any pieces in that clearing. So that's gonna be a way to get you a card from somebody else. And then while it's face up, um, you're gonna draw an extra card down here for each of the tokens that are on the board. So by having that face up, you're gonna be able to draw later on. So that's cool. All right, let's find some more. Uh, another extortion one. Uh, oh, we got the raid token. So the raid, the way this works is it stays on the map until it's removed, like probably through battle or some, you know, some factions will have an effect to remove tokens. But when this is removed, what you're going to do is you're going to place one warrior in each adjacent clearing. So like, for example, let's say that this token was here and the Marquis cat, they declare battle. We don't have any way to defend ourselves or whatever. So if this token ends up getting removed, not only would they get the point for removing the token, but because this was the raid token, every adjacent spot, so over here, here, and here, they would all get one of my warriors in each of those places. And then finally we have, oh, another raid, nope. That means that our other bomb was right here. Yes, I had them both off. So the way the bomb works, this thing is scary, is that when it's flipped, then you would remove all of the enemy pieces in the clearing, and then you would take off that token. So the first thing you would do on your turn is to craft. Your tokens can either be face up or face down. And then you're gonna flip tokens to have things happen and or to score points. And the last thing you'll do during the bird song phase is that you're gonna recruit. What that means is you could spend any card so I could discard this fox card. And that would let me put a warrior not only in one fox clearing, but you can see here that it's in each clearing. So there are always four clearings of each suit. So you wouldn't just put the one warrior out, you'd actually end up putting four. Here and here and here. And that would be your birdsong phase. So let's talk about the daylight phase. The daylight phase has four actions listed there and you would take three of them on your turn. Uh, let's just start with the typical. Let's start with moving in battle because those are really common actions that almost every faction can do. And especially for move me movement, <laughs> movement uh, you have this nimble ability over here. Normally, in order to take a move action, most factions need to either rule the clearing that you're moving to or the clearing that you're moving from. So up here, we have two warriors. Remember, ruling means that you're counting your warriors and the buildings. We have two warriors here and a token that doesn't count as a building, and they have one warrior. So we rule here, we could leave from there, no problem. We're actually tied for ruling down here because we both just have the one warrior, so I couldn't leave this spot unless I was moving somewhere where I do rule, but I don't rule this spot and I don't rule that spot, so I can't move. Except the nimble ability says that you can move no matter who rules the clearing. So they're the exception to the rule that other factions have to follow. Battle is just like a typical battle, but I do like to take time to do a practice example about battling here with no um, uh, ambush cards available. Like I'm just gonna do a practice one. Remember battling means you declare battle. Let's have these guys go against that one right there. We're gonna roll both dice. These are numbered zero through three. As the attacker, we take the higher number. As the defender, they take the lower number. If you have a higher number than your number of warriors, you would need to adjust down to match. And then we would deal one hit to them and they would deal zero hits to us. So nothing tricky here with the, uh, with the battle. At least not as long as we're the attackers. 
if a different faction attacks us, we have this special ability, which says that we have embedded agents. If somebody attacks you and you're a defender, and there's also a face down plot token in that spot, we would actually deal an extra hit to the attacker. So by having these face down tokens and being a defender, that's gonna be good. That's gonna be an advantage for you. All right, so that was movement and that was battle. So let's go ahead and talk about plots and then tricking. Tricking is really straightforward. You would either swap two tokens and they either both need to face, be face up or they both need to be face down. Obviously, once these bombs were flipped up, then they would have been removed, so we'll go ahead and keep those face down for now. But we could flip, we could swap these two, or we could swap these two. Like I said, they both need to be face up or face down in order to swap them. Now, the plot action is how you get the plot tokens onto the board. And so to do that, what you would need to do is you would need to find a clearing that doesn't have a plot token already. You can't have more than one plot token on a spot. So let's say that I want to go put a plot token here. I would need to remove my warrior in order to put a plot token down. Pretty straightforward. But that's only true for your first plot token. If you decide to do a second plot action, you would need to remove two warriors from the clearing where you want to put your plot token. If you decide to do it a three time, then that third time you'd have to do three warriors removed. So it kind of words it a little interestingly here, but that's the general idea. Your first token, you remove one warrior from the, uh, from the clearing that you want to put the plot token in. If you want to do a second, you got to remove two warriors and then three for a third. But that is basically how your daylight phase is going to work. And remember, that you're trying to get these face down tokens so that then you can go back and flip them face up because up here that's where you're going to get your points but also you're going to get points from like your bombs for example because the general rules of root are when you remove buildings or if you remove tokens you get one point for those things so that could be a pretty powerful thing there you're going to want to keep an eye on that Let's talk about the evening phase, and then I want to talk about this exposure thing. All right, so evening, you can exert. And what that means is you could skip the draw phase in order to take one more of these actions up here. So you just get to choose. Do you want to do four actions or actually draw cards? And then after that, you're going to draw one card plus, as we mentioned before, one more card for each of these extortion tokens that are face up on the board. Once you have a bunch of cards in your hand, then you need to discard down to five. Pretty standard fare. So if you're just watching this video without knowing what I'm about to say, this looks pretty rough for the other players, and it is. These guys are sneaky, and they're dropping these plot tokens around, and that can be kind of scary. But there's this kind of fun gambling aspect. I don't know that it's really a gamble, but there's this exposure thing. Pretty much the other factions during their evening phase, but before they draw cards, if they have a face-down plot token on a clearing with them, so let's say that the, that the cat faction, they're just about to draw cards during their evening phase. They've got this plot token right here. What they could do is they could show you a card of the matching uh, clearing. So they could show you in this example, a fox card. And when they do that, they're gonna make a guess for which of the four plot tokens they think that is. So it's kind of tricky because having the face up tokens is good because it gets you points, but you're also unveiling a lot of information by having a lot of face up plot tokens. So they would point to that to show you the card and they'd say which plot token they think you put there. You would make sure that you know what the token is and if they were right, then you remove the plot token and nothing happens, okay? And it, even down here, this is a when removed thing. Exposure doesn't count. This is just totally removed. Your plot has been foiled and exposed, you know. But if their guess is incorrect, you say no, and they have to give you the card that they were showing you. And that is how this faction works. So let's just do a, a quick, what I like to do at the end of these videos is say, you don't want to tell everybody every piece of information on your turns. Like that can be really overwhelming, especially for new players. So what I like to do is I like to tell each faction that you should just introduce yourself at the beginning of your turn. And here are the things that I would talk about um, at the beginning of my turn. I would definitely explain the idea that we are terrorists, that we have all of these face down plot tokens that we're gonna try to get on the board. I would just do a quick overview of the types of tokens that you're trying to get on there. You know, I would just say, hey, I could put down a bomb which will I would put down a bomb and when I flip it up it would explode removing all of the pieces there 
Uh, I could snare you. I could kind of trap you into a spot. I could try to extort cards out of you, and I could also try to raid certain clearings. So just a really quick overview of what these plot tokens are. And I would point out that by getting them on the board, that doesn't get you points, but by flipping them up later on, bad things are gonna happen, and that's how you're gonna score points. So you're gonna try to go around the map dropping these plot tokens in order to flip them up and such. Also, because it won't happen until after your first turn, uh, you could wait to explain exposure until the, like once you get a plot token down, explain exposure during the first time that it matters. So like you're gonna wanna keep an eye out who's taking their turn. If this plot token is down, just like we talked about, let's say I just took my turn and I just got this plot token down, then during their turn, right before they draw cards, explain the exposure thing. Say, hey, there's a plot token here. You could try to expose it. Here's how you do that. And I would honestly probably just keep it that simple. They are so straightforward in all of their other things. It's just these plot tokens are the scary things and, and other players need to know what they are, why they're on the board, and how to stop them especially. It's also really important that you explain this idea here that if people try to attack you when there is a face down token, that you're gonna deal an extra hit. And they do need to know that you're nimble, that you can move from clearing to clearing, You don't ha that you don't even look at ruling because you are lawless creatures. But yeah, that is just a general overview about the Corvid conspiracy. I hope this video is helpful for you. I have one video for every faction. You could see the links in the description of this video, plus the general overview, plus a general setup guide or whatever. But I do want to thank you for watching, and I hope you have a great day. Enjoy playing Root. It's so cool. Okay, bye.